What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. So continue from the last video, this time we're going to find out the last two expressions, which are secant square of x and cosecant square of x. And hopefully we can rewrite uh, these two uh, quadratic uh, uh, trigonometric functions in terms of just linear trigonometric functions. And uh, of course, ideally, we would, uh, we would like to try to rewrite secant square in terms of secant only and cosecant square in terms of cosecant only. But of course, if it's not working, we will try to use some other trigonometric functions to replace it. But still, we would like to try to use um, only the linear uh, trigonometric functions, meaning that we will not, uh, we will hopefully not going to see a square in our expression still. So how do we do it? Here we go. First one, secant square of x. Well, first of all, by the definition, secant square is uh, secant is actually same as one over cosine, and again, that is because secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and you can think it like uh, uh, as a definition, but you can also prove it by the um, identity or trying to draw a triangle and see uh, the relationship between that. So using that, we'll actually get one over cosine square of x. Then as we already know what cosine square of x is, we will now just substitute it to get the following. For cosine square of x, we will say that it is equal to one plus cosine of two x. So all over two. And of course, now we have a complex fraction. We would like to simplify into just a single fraction so that there is no more, uh, no more than one uh, fraction, uh, yeah, the fraction bar here. So how do we do it? When we have one over something inside, uh, that's a fraction, we will, uh, it's just same as one divided by that fraction. So. We will just flip that fraction in order to get rid of the two fraction bars. And we will actually get this expression here, two over the quantity one plus cosine of two X. And of course, as we mentioned at the beginning, we would like to try to re rewrite the expression in terms of secant instead of uh, other trigonometric, uh, other trick functions if possible. And luckily we know that cosine is exactly the reciprocal of secant, or in other words, it's just one over secant. So what can we do? We can just multiply both top and bottom by secant of two X, such that when we multiply in, the cosine and secant will cancel out. And if we simplify it, we will now get two times a secant of two X all over, as we distribute it, we'll get secant of two X plus one. And that's it. That is for secant square of X. And now we're gonna jump into the last expression, cosecant square of X. Okay, so now we're going to use the same logic to try to deal with cosecant square of X. And again, by the trick identity. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So we can rewrite this expression as one over sine square of X. And again, now we are going to use the other trick identity, uh, which is the half angle formula for sine square of X, which gives us one minus cosine of two X all over two in the denominator. And again, now as we have a complex fraction, we're going to flip the denominator so that we'll have only a simple fraction, which means we now get one minus cosine of two X. But of course, we would like to rewrite it as cosecant if possible. Unfortunately, we cannot because cosecant and cosine do not pair up. In the previous example, we saw that cosecant, oh uh, no, we saw that cosine and secant are reciprocal of each other. But 
for cosine, no, for cosecant, we said that it is the reciprocal of sine. But then we cannot change between sine and cosine if they're linear terms. So we will not be able to rewrite the whole expression in terms of cosecant only. But still, we would like to try to get something that is very close. Of course, leaving it in terms of cosine, that's also fine. But usually when we try to mention cosecant, we will also like to pair up with secant itself. So we can just try to multiply both top and bottom by secant again. So in this case, we will multiply both top and bottom by secant squared. Uh, no, not secant squared, secant of 2x. Such that now we will be able to rewrite the expression into 2 secant of 2x all over the quantity secant of 2x minus 1. And that's it. Okay. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please don't forget to like. And also you can subscribe to my channel to find out more of my other videos. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that whenever there is a new video, you will not miss it either. I'll see you guys next time.